Morgan. I am one of the music teachers here for the summer arts camp here at the Arts Center. I wish I could be with you guys, but we're going to have to do it this way for right now. So um, I'm going to introduce you to my assistant today. This is Brandon. Hey guys, I'm Brandon Alvarado. I'm the education coordinator here at the Lake Wolves Art Center. I hope you guys are having a fantastic summer. I'm really excited to be doing this class here with Miss Morgan. All right. So uh, today we're going to start with learning about some wind instruments. All right. So you may have some ideas of what a wind instrument is. So I'm going to ask Mr. Brandon here, what he thinks a wind instrument might be and what might qualify an instrument to be a wind instrument. All right, so uh, I think a wind instrument, you've got a flute, right? You've got a, a saxophone, everyone mm -hmm. loves some good jazz, and then um, maybe like a trombone or something, yeah? Right, yeah, those are good. Yeah. Yeah, so why, why do you think that those might be considered wind instruments? Um, well, I'm thinking of a saxophone because it's a reeded instrument, uh -huh. like a like a clarinet or something like that, and uh, a flute. I I don't know. I just know flute, like a pan flute or something like that. Yeah. So they all require you to like blow air into them. Yeah, right? well, yeah, yeah, like blow air. Into so them. that's the important part about a wind instrument. You want to make sure that if you're going to call it a wind instrument, that it requires air. Now we have different types of wind instruments because, like Mr. Brandon mentioned over here, we have brass instruments and then we have the wood wind instruments so your brass instruments are more of like your trumpets and your trombones and french horns and tubas and all of those big instruments that are basically made of metal the saxophone however yeah. can be a little misleading because it looks like a brass instrument but it's not and you go well why not well because it has a reed in it mm -hmm. like mr brandon mentioned with the saxophone and the clarinet. So a reed is just a little piece of wood that you put on your instrument on the mouthpiece and it vibrates against the plastic, the other mouthpiece that it's with, and it makes the sound. But they all require air. So we're just gonna call them all wind instruments today, okay? So we're gonna make some of these instruments okay. now. Pretty excited, we're gonna make three instruments today. So I know you have a bag of supplies that you're gonna need, so let me tell you exactly what you need for today. So you have two popsicle sticks. So you're gonna need these popsicle sticks. You got your popsicle sticks? Popsicle sticks, yeah. All right. You got a little toothpick. Okay. Get your toothpick. Okay. Two smallish to medium sized rubber bands. Okay. Then you got a bunch of straws. Uh, there's like 10 or 11 in each cup, so just make sure you got a bunch of them. Okay. And one piece of paper. Yes, you won't need the whole sheet, but just in case, you add a whole sheet. And then Mr. Brand and I are going to share some scissors and some tape. We washed our hands before we started. Okay, so what would you like to start with? We're going to make a harmonica, we're going to make a flute, and we're going to make just a basic wind instrument. So um, what do you think you want to start with? Why don't we start with the, har the harmonica? That the seems harmonica. like a good time. That sounds like a yeah. great idea. All right. So first, you're going to need popsicle sticks. Okay. Your toothpick. Your rubber bands okay. and a piece of paper. So basically you just don't need your straws yet. So go ahead and put those to the side. Okay. Okay. So you're gonna take your popsicle sticks. Okay. Set those right there for right now. You're gonna take your toothpick. You wanna break it in half. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just as close to the middle as you can get. You're gonna break it in half. So you got like two small toothpicks. Make sure you don't get any splinters. So if you got little stray pieces, pick those off. Then you're gonna take your piece of paper. As you can see, I practiced a little bit. I took a little piece off. That's about the size you're gonna need, okay? Okay. So it's gonna fit in the middle of your popsicle stick. So you don't want a piece that's any bigger than your popsicle stick or it won't work. So we're gonna go ahead and just, you don't need scissors, you can just tear it. I mean, if you wanna use scissors, go ahead, but you don't have to use scissors. You can just tear a little piece off. Like I said, we're not being perfect here. Ms. Morgan, is this was a piece a bit too big, you think, for our popsicle stick? It might be a little too wide, a little okay, too fat, so, so just take a make little it a little off. skinnier. Yeah. Okay. There we go, lost a little weight there. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, good deal. Okay, so now you're going to take your popsicle stick, just one of them, and we're going to take one small piece of tape. Oh, my, that might be a little too big, we'll see. Okay. And you're going to put the tape on one of the sides of your paper. Okay. Okay, and then you're gonna take your paper, you're gonna line it up. You don't want a whole lot hanging over the one side. It's okay if it hangs over on the other side. 
And then you're gonna take the tape and fold it over. Fold it over. Yep, Good. perfect. Okay. Just make sure it's taped to the popsicle stick. So as you can see, it kind of flaps. That's good. You don't want it to be stuck all the way to your popsicle sticks. Okay. Like we said, we need something to vibrate. And you're gonna see how that works in just a couple minutes. All right, so once we got that, okay. I'm gonna take your other popsicle stick, put it on top. It's gonna be a, this might be a little challenging. Is this a bit too, or is this good? Or yeah, if you wanted to good? cut, just see mine's just a little bit. See, okay. you see the difference between mine and Mr. Brandon's? His is sticking out a little far, so if you wanted to trim that or you know pull that off a little bit, that'd be fine. If it's sticking over a little bit, that's fine, but you don't want a whole lot of paper hanging over. It's not going to vibrate the right way. Okay, Miss Morgan, you think that's enough, or I need to do a little? That bit looks more? perfect. Okay. Looks just like mine. Okay, so you're going to okay. take your little piece of toothpick and you're going to stick it between okay. the popsicle sticks. Now. If you have a parent around or an adult or a sibling or somebody, you might need an extra hand is what I'm trying to get at. So if you need a little bit of help, don't be afraid to ask because sometimes it's hard to. Okay. Now, Miss Morgan, how far in see? does it need to be? Just far enough that you're gonna wanna put your rubber band around the edge here. Okay. You're gonna wanna put it here. So you're gonna want it to be in far enough that you can still rubber band okay. around it but not too far in. Then you're gonna take your rubber band, you're gonna wrap it, and you wanna make sure it's tight that your toothpick's not gonna to fall out. You can see my toothpick's hanging over on the side a little bit. That's good. You need an extra hand? I think so. Oh. All right, so I'll hold your popsicle sticks together. Okay. And then you rubber band it. Right. On the other side oh, of the toothpick. On the other side of the toothpick. Yep, right? on the outside okay. of the toothpick. On the toothpick. outside of the toothpick. And we'll do another one to make it nice and tight, make like you said. Nice and tight. All right. Teamwork makes the dream work, everyone. All right, let's see here. Uh oh. Oh, oh, oh maybe, maybe I do this. Okay, and, you, and, and you, I did everybody. Yeah, and you explain. I can do that. Okay. So we put it on the outside because if you do it on the inside, it's going to stop the paper from moving the way it needs to. Okay. Oh, tight rubber band. There we go. Okay. All right. Thank you, Miss Morgan. You're Appreciate welcome. It. You're going to do the same right. thing with your other toothpick on okay. the other end. <clears throat> so this rubber band's a little bit bigger, so I'm going to have to loop it a couple more times than I did my smaller one. So it doesn't really matter. Oops. doesn't really matter how many loops you do. It's just that you want it to be tight enough that your toothpick's not going to oh, yeah. fall this out. This one is a little bit loose, too. Better tighten just a little bit more. So two, three, four, how many times... You got to you got to get it to go. It doesn't matter. All right, one. There we go. Okay. Oh. So I did mine four times because I want to make sure it's not going anywhere. Okay, I think I got mine with three. I might only be doing two. Hang on. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Good. So you see our toothpicks are in there. Got our rubber bands on. Got your paper there. See the toothpicks? Make sure you can see everything. Okay. okay. Now we're going to test them out. Right. This be the true test to see okay. if we can make vibrations. So what you're going to want to do is the piece of the, sorry, the side of the toothpick that has mm -hmm. the tape on it, you're going to want to blow on that side. Okay. You don't want to blow on the side that has the free paper because then it won't vibrate. Okay. So. I have a mask gonna, on, so I'm. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. I will we'll attempt to use mine. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to make like a do kind of sound on it because you want to have a pitch to it like a harmonica does. A pitch is a note, okay? So oh, mine might be a little too tight. If it doesn't make any sound, just loosen one of your rubber bands. If your toothpick isn't going anywhere, it's still going to make sound, okay? So let's try to fix that a little bit. And it's okay if it doesn't work the first time. It's all about learning. Playing an instrument the first time is not easy. So, and wood instruments and wind instruments are some of the hardest instruments you can play because they require a lot of practice with getting the right kind of vibration out of your lips and everything. So let's try it again. See, mine was just a little too tight. So we have a harmonic. I really like that. Wow, Miss Morgan, that's really awesome. What do you think about that? That's I pretty think that's neat. great, yeah. Well, guys, so now you know how to play a harmonica and make one. All right, so we're gonna put that to the side now. 
Now, do you want to make your wind instrument or do you want to make the flute? I'm really feeling the flute today. The flute. Okay, so you want to take all of your straws but one. Set one to the side. That'll be for our wind instrument, okay? Now, this one also might require a little bit of teamwork because you're going to try to get all your straws to stick together. And you're going, how in the world are we going to do that? I'm going to show you. Oh, my goodness. Okay. So how many straws do you have, Mr. Brandon? I've got uh, 10 straws, Miss Morgan. Me too. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So we're not going to make a flute like you're thinking, like when you hold it over here. Okay. We're not doing that. We're going to take and make like a, uh, a pipe flute. So uh, Mr. Brandon mentioned a pan flute. Same okay. thing. Okay. So what's your, what's, I have found is easiest when I'm making this is to take all of your straws. Okay. And if you're trying to do it when you're holding them together, they're going to get all crumpled up, right? Okay. So the best thing that I found to do is lay your straws flat on the table and try to line them up as best you can. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. You're going to take a piece of tape. You're going to want it to be pretty long because you're going to wrap it around all of your straws, okay? You got it? You doing good over there? I'm uh, just making sure it's nice and uh... Making sure it's nice and okay. even. It's about, about this long you Yeah, as okay. long as it wraps around your straws to hold them together, we'll be good. All right, here we go. We've got a piece of, piece of tape here. All right, All right. see it? We have different lengths and it'll probably okay. be just fine. I got a little extra. So what you're gonna do is the best way I have found to do this. Okay. Sure nothing else in the way because you don't want to get stuck to anything else. Take your tape and lay it, oops, lay it flat across Closer to one end than the other. So not right in the middle, but okay. a little higher up maybe. Lay it flat on your straws. And then once they're stuck together that way, yep. Okay. And then you can kind of pick up your tape and see they're all still stuck together. Then you're gonna flip it over, oh. lay it flat. Yep, this is the hard Here part. Here we go. <laughs> then take your tape, and I got too much tape, that's okay. Wrap it. So I'm going to get the scissors and I'm going to cut off this extra tape so it doesn't mess up. Looks like I'm going to need to cut the extra pieces off too. So you want to make sure you get it nice and... It's about like this, Miss Morgan, about right here? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to cut that and then I'm going to take this just to make sure it's good. And it's okay if they get a little bunched up because it's probably going to happen a little bit. Wrap it around again. Okay. Oops, I'm just going to set that tape there for right now. <clears throat> okay. So Mr. Brandon's getting there. We've got 10 straws. See, mine aren't completely straight, but they're pretty much straight across the top. <clears throat> Flip it around the other oh. way. Yep. Okay. You're going to want the part that has less straw up top, okay? Because what we're going to do is we're going to make different lengths of our straws to get different pitches. What do you think? Do you think a longer straw is going to make a higher or a lower pitch? Um, I'm going to think a longer straw is going to make a, like a lower sound. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, the smaller it is, I think the higher it's going to be. Do you know why? Um, I actually don't, Miss Morgan. What, what, what's, the, what's the reasoning behind that? Okay, so the bigger or longer an instrument is, the lower pitch it makes because it has more room for air to go through it. So it takes longer to get to the end, which makes it lower. Okay. Longer means lower usually. The smaller the instrument, the higher pitch because the exact opposite. There's less room for the air to have to travel through. Okay. So it has a higher frequency to move, which makes it a higher pitch. So what we're gonna do okay. to get the same kind of effect is you're going to take your scissors, it's kind of fun because your straws might explode a little bit of everywhere. <laughs> and you're going to cut at an angle. See how I got that going down? See how we're going down? Okay, we're going to cut, cut, at an angle. All the straws, make sure your fingers aren't in the way because that would not feel good. And that straw didn't cooperate, so we're going to cut that off right there. Okay. All right. So and you see how I have a short straw here and then a long straw here. So the hope is when we play it or blow across the top of it, that the air here, when it comes out the bottom, sounds higher than this one. Yep. Okay. Does it matter how long, uh, like if I had cut it down here, would that matter? No, um, it does not matter. 
Now, if you had done that, your whole instrument might sound lower than mine, like your first straw might make a lower sound than mine because it was longer to begin with, and that's okay. Each instrument Ooh. has a slight different sound to it. So then, when you blow, you don't want to blow into it. If you blow into it, you're just blowing air straight through it and it's not going to work the same way. You want to blow across it. You ever been like when you have a drink from McDonald's or something <laughs> and you have soda or, you know, juice or whatever yeah, yeah. you take and you blow across your straw and then you drink some and it has, you know, a different pitch because mm -hmm. you have less liquid? Yeah. Same concept. So you want to blow across the straw. Hear how it was higher? Yeah, I they're all higher because they're skinny straws. So the skinny straws are all going to sound pretty mm -hmm. high but you can hear a slight difference from here all the way down. Obviously, you can't try yours because you have a mask on. I'm gonna keep my mask, mask on for on. safety. So, weird times, ready? I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to there do it with me. I don't know if you could hear that, but um, there's definitely a difference between my pink straw here and my green straw over here. All right. Okay. So, now we're gonna make the hardest one of all, I uh -oh. think. It's the okay. hardest one to play and Mr. Brandon would honestly probably do a better job playing it than I would, but he's gonna wear his mask, so that's gonna be. So just put your straw pieces okay. over to the side. Get your last straw. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make a wind instrument. It's going to be similar to a double reeded instrument, like an oboe. Well, I didn't so, play the oboe in high school. I didn't play any uh, wind instruments. I play the piano. So I've had to learn, just like you guys might have to do with these, how to play them, because we all have different skills and that's okay. So. What do you think makes an instrument a double reeded instrument? Ah, so um, a reed, mm -hmm. uh, so a clarinet and a saxophone have a reed. Um, right. And it's that little piece of wood you talked about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking maybe for double reeds, it maybe has a different reed type or it's a double double wood or something like that. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Right, so a double reed, you have two reeds. And instead of just one, you have two that are stacked on top of each other. And they kind of make like when you take Pringles, and you put them in your mouth and make like duck lips. It's kind of the same thing, but with two different reeds. So the best way that I have found to make a double reeded instrument is with a straw, obviously. Okay. You're gonna take it and you're gonna pinch the top. So like when you get bored and you're chewing on a straw and your mom says, stop that. We're not gonna chew on it. We're just gonna use our fingers because we don't wanna hurt our teeth. So you're gonna make sure that the bottom stays nice and round and the top gets a little flat. And then you're gonna take your scissors and carefully you're gonna cut your, I'll show you in a second, you're gonna cut your straw tip to a point. See that? Kinda looks like a gator mouth almost. Maybe a snake. Okay. The scissors please, Ms. See how it's kinda flat and then gets rounded at the bottom? So this is what it's looking like before, yep. before I cut into it. You turn it sideways and show them? Oh, sideways, yep. okay. See that? All right. And then I'm cutting it uh, at an angle again to make a point, can I see? Yeah. Okay. Make like a little triangle at the top. Yep. Okay. We'll see. There we go. Very good. It doesn't matter if they're even. One side can be a little longer than the other. As long as you come to a point and it's flat, that is all that matters, okay? Okay. Now, this is where it's a little tricky. That's all you have to do to make it now to get the sound out okay so you're gonna put it in your mouth and you're gonna kind of like put your lips over your teeth and kind of don't close it all the way but almost the whole way and you're gonna still make that do kind of sound that we made with our harmonica the kind of sound right okay so you're gonna i have worked for hours at this and sometimes it works and sometimes okay. it doesn't but we're all learning right <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. And sometimes you just have to find the sweet spot on your straw. Like you just saw, I got a little bit of sound out and then it quit. And then you hear that loud vibration. And once you get to make that sound, yeah. you can That's usually really figure cool, it out. Yeah. It's kind of hard, so keep trying. Don't give up. And if your mouth gets tired, just take a break. Come back to it. It'll be great. Sounds like a bagpipe channer. Yes. It does kind of sound like a bagpipe starting up. It's yeah. awesome. 
So those are our wind instruments for today. Do you have any questions about wind instruments, Mr. Brandon? Uh, no, Miss Morgan. I think this is a really this is really fun to do. We've got three great instruments here, and you guys are going to have a really fun time uh, doing this. Um, thank you again, Miss Morgan, for doing this. This is really exciting. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Bye, guys. I see y'all later.